Hello and welcome, I am Lean from Crime Fresh and today I will bring you a few information about a Splatfest that will start in a few hours. A Splatfest is the fight between two groups, in our case it will be Team Cake and Team Ice Cream. The fights will be on stage and it will be 2 of 4 only. Like in Splatoon 1, there is something called Splatfest Power. The Splatfest Power is a value that decides how strong you are and you can either get better or worse. You will only get matched up with teams that have similar Splatfest values as you have. Contrary to the last game, you don't start at a specific value but instead you have to play 7 matches in order to get a rating that is a bit more accurate. Now you cannot only play Splatfest solo where you get teamed up with 3 strangers but you can also play Splatfest Team, where you can team up with 3 more squids. It is only possible to play in 4 squads or a solo. Last but not least the results from the Splatfest. This time they are not calculated with a factor like in the last game, but instead in 3 categories. The first one is popularity, the second one is wins in solo and the last one is wins in team. Whoever has 2 or 3 wins, wins the whole Splatfest. This Splatfest has two rotations. The first rotation lasts 2 hours and the second rotation also lasts 2 hours. Each rotation has different maps. The first rotation offers Starfish Main Stage and Inkblot Art Academy, while the second rotation offers Mori Towers and Humpback Pump Track. Let's take a look at Starfish Main Stage first. As we can see, most action will most likely take place in the mid or at the gradings close to mid. We start at the main stage of this area. This area is not accessible by the enemy teams and so you can just paint here without being worried of getting flanked or something. When we go to the left we can see the main part of the stage. We can access quite a few things here and especially we can reach everything in mid here. The top area and the grading is very easy to access for chargers and others and it will be most likely a good spot for chargers to hide themselves. Also rollers can be seen there as they can simply drop down to you. The next map I would like to talk about is Inkblot Art Academy. It has something high in mid where you will most likely see chargers and besides that it's pretty open. When we start here, we see that we are at the higher grounds. We can drop down on a few levels and when we for example go to the left, we have access to the left area or to the mid area. The main part of the stage is here in mid. Also we have things on the left where we only have one level of height and we can also go to the top from here. The top has quite a few spots and with a charger most of the higher platforms can be reached. The next map is Humpback Pump Track. You can see a big uh, mid area where most of the things can be accessed and an isolated outer area. When we go through the outer area we can only access the outer circle while when we are on mid area we can normally only access the mid area. But if you ever want to access the outer circle from the mid area, you can simply jump over here. The last map to talk about is Mori Towers. It looks quite similar to the one from the first game, but it has a bit more area in mid, especially where the sneakies are located. The last change on Mori Towers are the ink rails. There are 6 in total, 3 on each side. We can reach them by shooting them and then we can swoop through them to reach other areas, like the overlook or the, the sneaky on the side. We can also charge our charger shots there and swim with the capped charge there and shoot. I hope you enjoy the Splatfest as much as we will do and I hope to see you when fighting for either Team Ice Cream or for Team Cake. I hope you have fun and see you in the next video.